Hi, I'm Cal, and today I'm going to show you how you can model eclipses using spatial analysis in SDK's analysis workbench. So let me switch over to SDK and show you the scenario that I already have built. So this scenario models a lunar eclipse that's actually happening next week on the 26th of May 2021, although this analysis could be done for any eclipse at any time. What we see here if I animate forward through time is that um, we're looking from the moon's perspective towards the sun and I can see that uh, the Earth is going to pass directly between the line from the moon to the sun. So I want to model how that's actually going to affect the area around the moon. Let's say I had a satellite that was going to be orbiting the moon and I wanted to understand the effects of this eclipse during those times. That's what volumetrics within analysis workbench will allow you to do. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on this volumetric object that I have created on the left hand side called intensity calculation and this will show you the end result of this calculation. So here on the bottom I have a legend showing the solar intensity in this region around the moon and you can see now um, the moon is within this sphere but I have this, uh, this much larger sphere that goes to altitudes above the moon's surface and currently everything is at 100% so we see 100% solar intensity. The only obstructing object here is the Earth. So of course the Moon would be obstructing some of these points, however I've removed that from the calculation so we can only see the effect of the Earth's eclipse. Now animating forward through time, again you'll see, you'll watch the Earth's shadow move across this volumetric region that I've created around the Moon. And this is a very powerful tool within Analysis Workbench. Um, that you could also use to, to compute solar intensity along, let's say, the trajectory of a satellite. If you had a satellite orbiting the moon, you could perform exactly the same analysis to understand how solar intensity is going to vary on your solar panels, for example, as this eclipse uh, passes. So now for how this analysis was done. I'm going to open up the properties of this volumetric object on the left-hand side just to show you um, really quickly that I created a lunar grid in Analysis Workbench which represents a, a, a set of grid points along that volume, that sphere that I created around the moon. And then I applied a spatial calculation which is this solar intensity uh, no moon to that grid. And so that's computing the solar intensity with only the Earth as an obstructing body rather than the moon so that the backside wasn't always obstructed as you saw. And so what that looks like within Analysis Workbench if I go ahead and uh, click on my intensity calculation and open analysis workbench. I'm going to go over to my central bodies and I constructed all of this on the moon central body. If I go over to the spatial analysis tab, I'll see this lunar grid that I created and that's just a series of azimuth elevation and range uh, values and steps between those minimums and maximums. And then a solar intensity calculation that includes only the Earth as an eclipsing body. So the combination of that grid and that constraint slash spatial calculation was able to uh, model this, this eclipse fully in 3D graphics and also gave me the ability to generate solar intensity data throughout the sphere of influence around the moon. Thanks for watching and always don't forget to get in touch with us at support at agi.com.